or the goal of the Eastern wisdom is we have been understanding it is an end of suffering, end of suffering. And awakening to inner peace and happiness, love and wisdom, that is our goal. So how we go about it, we allow the intellect to change by the power of knowledge. Now when there is a change in behavior and attitude, we ask the mind to accept it. And when we accept, then what happens? You set an example around you, near you in your relationships. So you keep on evolving. You are in peace, other finds you that you are now a harmless, including your honey. So there is no chance of moving from soulmate to soulmate. And the life becomes beautiful. That is basically the entire goal of the Eastern wisdom. And I have talked a lot about it, that we have 3,000 teachers in the text, and it is the knowledge. Now question comes, are you changing? So ask yourself, how many times, how many situations, locations, people made you upset, anxious, scared, stressed and suffering? So that is the greatest way to check and understand whether we are changing or not. So if we are not changing, we are still carried away by the situation, time, location, people, outside. We are constantly influenced by the world outside. It means we have yet to become a seeker. Right question is not that the others are responsible for my suffering. In Eastern wisdom they say, I have become blind to that situation, to that person, to that time, to that event, which is causing me the stress and suffering. Nobody else outside is responsible for our suffering. What is going to happen? You know what is going to happen that one day the time comes your mind will refuse to be miserable. No, I'm not. I'm not entering into any kind of a stress. That is one way to check that we have become the highest level of a seeker. And that is what we have been covering a couple of weeks about karma yoga. Right? mental attitude and a state and that expresses the speech and the action in our relationship with people with the situation. So what do we find? You will find that you rise in awareness, a level of your awareness goes up and you will find, it's not ego, but you will find as if you are living about the social consciousness. You are not carried away by them. And that is settled completely in our mind. So we refuse to be miserable. We have already understood that the Karma Yoga results in heightened state of self-awareness dispassion, a sense of attachment and detachment, they are loosened in our mind. They don't create any problem. And a sense of delusion is gone. And once that sense of delusion is gone, 
you will find every situation, every condition is favorable in your life. Every situation, every condition. I don't know whether you have started feeling that or not. Why it happens? Why it happens? The knowledge is per settled in the intellect and it is constantly giving the feedback to the mind to express my speech, my action. In turn, I find the change in behavior and attitude in my life. So I ask you hardly twice a week or thrice a week, you have to ask every hour. How, why, how many times I get upset I enter into conflict, I enter into anxiety. And never forget, listening and learning these principles, contemplation and reflection, results in detachment or dispassion. From the dispassion, the mind drops the delusion. The moment you drop the delusion, you will find the entire day the mind is not running, it is not wandering, it is not distracted. So that is what is known as the purity of the mind. But the mind does not leave the projection. And that is where last week we started understanding, uh, we want to understand there, how to drop this projection. You see that we have an impression deeper inside the mind and now from that impression emotions are there and now that emotion triggers when I see someone. So now it connects and it creates a different feeling and the projection is there. Did you get it? Let me say you that when you see your honey, you have a different set of emotion. When you see me, there is a different set of emotion. When you see your pet, there is a different emotion. When you look at your car, and then there is a different set of feeling projection. So the mind is constantly projecting its feeling, its ideas, its notion over people, over honey, over the things. So that is why this mind is constantly distracted and it is wandering all the time. It has less to do with the impurity. It has more to do with, you know, we talk of the impurity of the mind. Uh, I'm not seeking anything. I'm not desiring anything. But still, the moment you see someone, it triggers a kind of a projection. What is that projection? Projection is nothing but a feeling. I should have this car. Why? because it gives me peace and happiness. So the, the moment we have a projection, it results into the forgetfulness of the mind. So we live in this kind, this is also known as the wandering of the mind and the distraction of the mind. You know, many people say, you know, I cannot control my my thoughts. Why should you control your thoughts? Mind is meant for thinking. You should have a right thinking. Are you getting it? What is the utility of a car? Now my car you know, always runs. You know, it will run when you drive. You should drive it rightly. No, no, no. I have a lot of problems, you know when I look at the opposite sex. So, do you want to become blind? 
eyes are meant to see. You have to change that projection. Are you getting it? For that projection, the word that is used is upasana. Upasana. You know, science is not very clear, so I'm not talking too much of emotions and the feeling. We talk of emotions of sadness, anger, uh, surprise and excitement, but the feeling all, are all of our experiences that takes place in the mind. So you look at a person, the emotional reaction is there. So what I experience about that person is the feeling. And so here we say that the mind keeps on projecting millions and millions of the things every moment unless these projections dissolve completely we cannot enter into the higher state of mindfulness awakening does not take place so we have three step strategy remove the impurities of the mind by karma yoga and these are known as the emotional bondage, emotional dependence. So we should move from the emotional bondage to the emotional freedom by upasana. When you say he or she is my soulmate, you have excluded everyone. So what is the emotional freedom? You have the same set of higher emotion free from the attachment and dependence all the time. And then you say, yes, he or she is my soulmate. But that soulmate, internally, the mind has a content of calmness, pure emotion of love in the mode of self-giving not in the mood of self-taking. It has nothing to do with the emotional dependence. It has nothing to do with the emotional bondage. The moment we have an emotional dependence, that is what is causes lot of projections. So that is why we need to work on our mind, the emotional content of the mind. We have this emotional bondage in millions of the things. Now I only eat this thing. If you only wear this dress, then only I will love you. You have been soulmate to me, but now you are a soulmate to me. You know, you see that that is how we express our uh, feeling and emotion. Now, if you look back almost maybe a thousand years the human mind has not changed they have the same set of emotions they have the same set of feelings they have the same set of projections My dad, you know, for example, my dad never chose, I'm citing an example. My dad chose a soulmate, and then he became a sour mate, then he divorced, then he remarried. So what is the difference between his mind and my mind? I also think in the same way. I don't change. Do you see that? We don't change. Oh, you are a wonderful friend of mine and after a few months, that friendship is gone. Our emotion, emotional mind never changes. Do you see that? Just check it. It happens at home. It happens in our relationship. It happens in our profession. It happens every moment. We start thinking, you know, I, I hate that guy. 
I'm not going to talk to that guy. It is done. Enough is enough. Why don't you think about your mind? Why don't you ask your mind? Is not is it not enough and enough and enough is enough? Why you have been doing and behaving in the same way again and again? Are you getting it? That is why we need to have this upasana. That is why we are trying to understand uh, the true import of this upasana. Ask another question in a different way so that we will understand why this upasana is very important. Do we want a situation, people, relation should cause stress and suffering to me? No, we don't want. We don't think and dream of it. We don't think and dream of a situation our relations, people in the time. We marry to be happy, but not not to be unhappy. We marry to we meet a person to be happy, not to be unhappy, but but in every situation it happens, it has a deeper bearing on our mind, emotional mind, if I use the word emotional. We eat for pleasure, but the pain returns. something hidden, something not known. <coughs> so our modern psychology says that these emotions are either consciously manifest or they remain at the unconscious level. Because they remain at the unconscious level, so the reaction, the emotional reaction of anger and the sadness they manifest and that destroys our life, our relationship, different situation. Well, it happened to me also in early days. And so what is the root cause is the emotional dependence, whether you say emotional dependence or you can say emotional bondage or we say that emotions trigger and it destroys the time a sense of excitement and a reaction and a blame and a complaint has those elements of emotion. Ask yourself another question. Okay, if they are definitely causing the emotional dependence and the problem from where they originate, it is from the animal mind. We carry forward the animal mind. No, animal mind, I told you that it is a chip. Uh, it is present in every animal, living species. They don't have an intellect. They don't have a choice of the, they don't have a choice. They cannot make a choice. They cannot observe. They cannot change. So the same animal mind is also present in us. So science says it is totally unconscious. It is difficult. You can manage your anger, but you cannot transcend your anger. You cannot transform. Ah, you can change your, ah, you have a sadness, you know, anger, sadness, fear. So we say that the moment we move from an emotional dependence to emotional freedom, how? Don't direct our emotion to anyone in the world at a particular time with a particular person, but let that emotion be directed to the one existence only. Only all existence. Let me meet you. So I direct my emotions to the existence who has given an opportunity to meet and communicate with you. Are you getting it? Huh? Sometime my English is not good, so you should interpret yourself. Huh? So, <laughs> so, no, I should redirect my emotions. Emotion is there, say. 
So the emotion of attachment is there towards a one person. So I redirect that emotion of attachment to the existent. I'm, let me be attached to the existence. Let me be attached to the existence. That is the word used in Eastern wisdom as upasana. Upasana literally means sitting nearby. Sitting nearby? Sitting nearby your love. Sitting nearby your existence. Sitting nearby not anyone in time, in space that is constantly changing. If your honey is not a seeker, so don't tell him or her, otherwise they will get upset. Let us understand in a different way. Impression is there, I don't know any impression in my mind that is accumulated. There are reservoir of impressions. From those impressions, the emotions trigger. So there is an emotional reaction. When there is an emotional reaction, I feel it. <clears throat> so when I say I feel it, that feeling is experienced in the mind. Now make it simpler. Past impression they are already deposited, accumulated, present deeper inside in my unconscious mind and that is the animal mind and other impressions are also accumulated since my childhood from the society, culture and education, religion. So now these impressions are mixed with the emotion for survival. That is why we have more psychological problems than animals. Impression mixed up with the emotions of survival. So there is always a sense of feeling of fear, feeling of anger as opposed to reaction is always there to bring about that change. So we express it by blame, complain. No, at least animals do not have to blame. They fight and whosoever wins and it is done. We carry forward those emotions continuously. We are burning with those emotions. And that is what is known as emotional bondage, emotional dependence. We have to get rid of this emotional dependence. Because it creates an emotional dependence and it prevents the mind to awaken to the real self. We are going slowly. So what is this upasana? Love for the sake of love. Not love for the sake of some expectations from others, from the time, from the situation, from the event. Think of it. Love for the sake of love. You are in the mood of self-giving. What it takes if you spare love for everyone, including your enemies, what it takes. It expands your mind. But those who are in the blame, complain, reaction game, it will not happen to them. So that is why the first step is the impurities of the mind must go. So method is upasana. Upasana I can say simply the love. You are a religious, you love Jesus. Focus on the Jesus. You are Hindu, Krishna, any god and goddess will do. I will come to that topic. Uh, Jews, Moses, anyone. Method is Upasana. And that Upasana, love for the sake of love. Do you still remember the three factors that I talked about, Upasana? That is very practical. 
in emotional dependence the mind swings like a pendulum i have i like you but after some time i don't like you so my mind moves to disliking and ah uh, last year i used to meet you is to used to give me a pleasure but this year it used to give me a pain so mind is moving like a pendulum so that upasana is that now the mind is steady why it is steady it has a sense of emotional freedom it does not go with the likes and dislikes it simply goes with the love you are living because of the existence you are born because of the existence so why should i blame complain and react against you you keep your mind totally free so mind lives in freedom from the projection and the impurities and now see look at again you know that is what we discovered for example we get we are attached what it means you know sometimes we say love at first sight how many people have a love for the first sight and how many times you got frustrated ashok you also had a love at first sight but you had an errant marriage okay okay before that yeah yeah uh, everyone you know i also had it so it's not a big deal but this love at the first sight is attachment so when we have a love at first sight now ask your what happens to your mind the mind keeps on thinking about that person maybe thinking about that person or a car or a dress whatever it is but here take the person so you know first you had a love at first sight emotional dependence expectations and then the mind keeps on thinking repeating 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 because of the repetition of the thought that person become a soulmate anesthesia <laughs> are you getting it your mind says he or she is my soulmate it is because of repeated thinking because of emotional dependence are you getting it think of this don't believe just just inquire think of this so this is an attachment so the whole process is expressed outside dating soulmate intense attachment and then what we say falling in love not rising in love that is why it is emotional dependence <laughs> that is why we say fall in love perhaps those who have coined this phrase they are right so pay attention to this this week think how many things and people and event you are attached or you have an emotional dependence the more you think and reflect on it you will find what has happened to this mind and that is what the projection is so the three points i told you last time also the object of attachment it may be anything object or a, object means a person a car a dress huh? anything no game you know now nowadays are uh, the gaming for the kids uh, they have been addicted so first that very attachment is an emotion converts into feeling in the mind but because i experience some sense of security some sense of pleasure so mind says why not start thinking so you have a constant thinking and that thinking creates Ah, uh, what do you say? An intense attachment. Then the love at first sight becomes fall in love. Third point is very important. The location. Where is the location of this intense attachment? No, I'm in love. You don't say I'm in love here. You say I'm in love. 
<laughs> do you see that? That is the heart. And did you say, anesthesia? I am in love. Uh, you don't say I'm in love or I'm in love here. You know, or you don't say I'm in love yet. So that location uh, seems to be deeper inside the heart where the mind triggers those emotions. So now then there is a vicious cycle. Uh, we will uh, do it. Uh, we will go next time. So what is the decision? I'm thinking it triggers the emotion of emotional dependence. So emotional dependence gives me the feeling inside and then it triggers the thought. So cycle of the thought, feeling and emotion that binds me, that makes me crazy is emotional dependence. We use the three factors in the upasana. We use the three factors, the same three factors. So now think of the object of attachment. Let me get attached to the existence. Now I'm doing it consciously. Falling in love takes place habitually, impulsively, instinctively. But now I'm doing the upasana is to bring all the three factors at the conscious level. I love you because you manifest existence. You are beautiful because the beauty is manifesting through existence in you. Are you getting it? So we are changing the entire thought pattern to trigger a conscious emotional response, not an emotional reaction. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Do you remember? Your kingdom come, your will be done as in earth and heaven. You see that? We embrace the entire existence. I don't want to go into any religion. So we can even use an image. I used to have an image of my master. Now, he represents the existence. Finished. I love him. I love my dad, yes. My guru expresses in my dad. So dad is an epitome of the guru. What I'm doing, last point then we will do the practice. I am trying to bring about a total change in the emotional impulsive reaction that is carried forward by the process of evolution. So as a human being, I can recognize these emotions and can redirect that emotion either to the real self in the beginning, from the beginning, or to any image of the God and goddesses, whatever we like, we love, as a tool. Or, or to the Guru, the way I do it, or to a mantra. Any mantra will do. Om Namah Shivaya will do. Shantoham will do. I am the peace. Peace is the existence. So I see the peace as the infinite space all around, in me and in everyone. That is in brief. We will understand this upasana in a couple of sessions. We will be. We have already started doing the practice. So just close your eyes. Let us start our practice.